We are back. You are chatting with John P. Today, we are going to be talking about Breitling watches, Breitling as a company. Again, I know I just did a video about Breitling uh, a short time ago, and I was really excited and optimistic and looking forward to what Breitling and George Kern um, is kind of going to do because they seem to be moving so fast and adapting to the marketplace and delivering a lot of what people want. But unfortunately, I'm here to share kind of an opposite opinion, which I've recently developed because they've launched the Breitling Select watch subscription plan, which companies like 11 James have tried in the past. I'm going to share with you how this works for them, why they want to do this and why, in my opinion, my opinion, but also the math as well. I have some back of the envelope calculations here. Why this just does not make sense for watch collectors and enthusiasts like us. But guys, please do not forget to check out DelrayWatch.com where we just brought in so many cool new watches. We have limited edition Tudor Black Bays. I think we have a Black Bay uh, Qatar. Another one we just brought in. We have the Arabic um, Gerard Perigo Laureato and so many other cool watches we've been really working around the clock to bring in for you. On the wrist today, I have a Cartier compressor, very rare vintage watch produced for Cartier by uh, actually Glycine. So very cool, rare watch. And you can see it on my Instagram, the real John P. So what is Breitling doing? Just the other day, I think two days before shooting this video, Breitling unlo uh, unleashed or um, launched the Breitling Select watch subscription plan. Now there's a big press release and many people are kind of curious and interested in how it works. Now I will say that I tried signing up for it. I tried signing up on the Breitling website. I used a different, a couple of different email addresses and I don't know if maybe there's an activation process or a manual process, but I've not actually been able to log into the platform and try it out. And in no way am I sponsored or affiliated with Breitling. And I think um, at the end, it'll be very self-evident of that fact. Uh, but I actually have not been able to sign up and get a watch in <clears throat> from Breitling. But what they do is, you know, they have a handful of watches. Now, the, the first critique that I have, before we get into the math, I'll say you go there, it looks very nice. They show you a lot of the really hot, desirable, and in-demand Breitling watches like the B01 uh, Chronomat, uh, the, the really cool chronograph that they came out um, within the last year or so. And then you also see the Super Ocean 57, the Rainbow Dial, which has kind of doubled or tripled in price from retail for the limited edition. People really love that. You see these pictures in the imagery, but then you go in there and there's, you know, maybe 15 or 20 watches that are the less desirable Breitling watches. Now I'll talk about why that is at the end and what Breitling, in my opinion, is trying to do with these watches that would have otherwise been sent to the gray market at steep discounts. But let's do some math here, right? So I have my notes here, rough math. The br And we're gonna, we're gonna actually see, does this make sense for a watch collector or anyone at all to actually do this financially? You know, there may be some other trend where it's more convenient for you or a, you know, a lower upfront cost. That's, that's another conversation. Let's do the math. So let's take into consideration this Breitling Super Ocean 42 automatic, which is going to be on screen here. And the retail price of this is roughly, depending where you are in the world, the equivalent of US dollars, $3,950, roughly $4,000. Now, Breitling watches, you typically can get a 30% off discount. We helped many people to get this. We no longer work with Breitling right now. Some of the dealers are, are feeling a pushback from the brand. So we're not helping people source new Breitlings like we used to, but the AD pays the authorized dealer when they buy the watch from Breitling, they're roughly, now it changes, but they're paying roughly 40 to 45% off the retail price, which means Breitling is, you know, producing the watch for a thousand dollars or less. But what this actually translates to and where the math really matters is you as a customer can buy this watch brand new from an authorized dealer, probably very likely at 30% off discount, no problem. You know, I've, I've seen it so many times and we've done this, $2,765. Now we're not taking into consideration tax. We have to consider that there's not sales tax everywhere in the world. And we also have to consider that if you buy a watch out of state, there may not be sales tax as well. So if you hunt around, you can pull it off. Happens every day, $2,765. 
Now, let's look at what Brightling charges. Now, once again, there's an error. I couldn't log into the system and actually do this, but their best advertised rate for their watches. And this is not the cheapest watch that they have available for sale. So I feel like I'm being more than generous by doing the math this way, because this is not the cheapest watch that they have for sale, which really would make the math not in their favor. But the price is $129 per month for this program and a one-time initiation fee of $450 US dollars. So let's put this into the perspective of the watch we're looking at, a $2,765 Breitling Super Ocean Automatic, the price that you'd be paying, subtract the $450 fee, uh, $2,315 divided by $129 monthly payment. So you have 129 times 18 months. That's what this translates out to. In 18 months, you'd be paying the same amount of money as borrowing a watch from Breitling that they own that goes back to them. So 18 times 129 plus the 450 gets you to that retail price that you could have bought the watch for. This Breitling Super Ocean Automatic 42 brand new box and papers and own the watch. Now, factor in that if you did buy the watch at the end of the 18 month period, you still have a watch that has a value. Pre-owned these watches, I think we would sell roughly, we sell comparable at Delray Watch for $2,300. That would be what we would probably sell this watch pre-owned for today. Let's say that you sell at private party $2,000 or even $1,800. Then you have $1,800 or $2,000 that you can reintroduce back into your pocket selling the watch, which really makes it even better of a deal for you to just buy the watch because you know it translates to you a difference of probably $1,233. If you had to subtract the difference that you pay, right? You have $2,000 watch left over, the watch cost $2,700, and $65, the difference a little over $700, sell the watch, $1,233 difference, which is really great. So you can see that in that 18 month period, it's a way better deal if you if you can and are willing to, you know, pay the upfront costs. Now, you know, PayPal has 0% financing, we've used it. Companies like Affirm have 0% financing. Some of the brands in, and even authorized dealers, including Tourneau, and some of the others have sometimes, if not always, 0% financing for 12, 18, sometimes 24 months if you had to do it that way. And so why would this make sense for any watch collector? Once again, I didn't choose the cheapest watch. They have a, a Breitling 36 and a couple of other watches. If we use the same lowest advertised price that they have now they might have more expensive monthly prices where this really starts to make the math really not make sense at all but as you can see here there's a huge difference in just buying the watch it's really on the benefit of the customer to just buy it and retain that value and not have to worry about it right so that's the first part now why would anyone actually do this program well first Maybe you like to switch your watches up and you don't want to go through the hassle of private party, sell here and there and worry about it. Maybe the finances are not the most important thing to you or the control. You just want to be able to swap out watches. Well, Breitling does claim that you can swap out a watch three times in any given calendar year. Now, the specifics are not clearly defined on their website in any of the places that I've been able to see as of yet. So I really do look forward, you know, fairly to be able to look, sign up, and maybe even try out this program. If someone at Breitling wants me to do this, I'd be glad to give an unbiased opinion on this. You know, we're not a, Bre a Breitling authorized dealer. We trade Breitling pre-owned, and I do enjoy some of their watches. Once again, I just did a video uh, really saying a lot of great things about the brand. So I feel like I, I can, you know, give an assessment fairly in both directions. So if you like to swipe swap out your watches, this could be a decent option for you, but I mean, you are paying a really high premium for it. But why is Breitling doing this, right? Are they, in, are they insulting watch collectors? Are they gambling that watch collectors are not going to be able to do the basic math here? I don't know that that's the case. I don't think it's the case. I can't imagine a company that's done so many other cool things for watch collectors actually doing that and making that gamble. I think watch collectors are generally really informed and really smart, educated and smart when it comes to these things. So why are they doing this? Well, 
the answer is in the selection of the watches. And I've been talking about Breitling doing this for years now, and this is nothing new to anyone in the industry or very familiar with the industry. Look at the watches. These are all the watches that Breitling is having a very difficult time selling compared to their hotter models. You don't see the Breitling Chronomat, the B01. You don't um, you don't see uh, the Breitling Super Ocean 57, which people are buying up. You don't see the re-edition watches. You don't see any of the watches that are really hot desired that they have no problem selling. You see the watches that would have ended up selling for pennies on the dollar to the gray market. Now I say it pennies on the dollar, but that's the case. Breitling oftentimes sells watches at their cost out there on the market historically, but that does water down the brand. And so what's Breitling's solution to this kind of brand watering down process, which I've talked about so much in the past. And you see companies, you know, including Richemont brands that are really trying to tighten up on the supply of watches. That's what Breitling is trying to do here by finding out something to do with their excess watches. Sure, they're going to make a little bit more, but they have operating costs as well. So, you know, for the from the consumer's perspective, sure, it's a way better deal to buy the watch and Breitling is, you know, charging a premium for that. But I'm sure that, you know, they have customer service agents that they have to pay for. I'm sure they're going to be reconditioning, right? Someone's going to get a sweaty leather strap that someone was out in the Miami sun in the heat with with their Breitling Um you know, with their Breitling or the rubber is going to get uh, start to get fragile and they're going to have to replace these things over time. So they're factoring in, factoring in these operational costs. What I think is Breitling is really trying to do here is maybe not rip off the consumer, but just try to find something to do with these gray market watches now that they know that authorized dealers are not going to be able to sell them as a huge discount. Something we've been hearing from authorized dealers that we've worked with. So we'll see what happens with Breitling. I think in the greater scheme, this is them trying to control their brand a little bit more. I think it can backfire but I want to know what do you all think try to sign up for the Breitling account on the website first of all has anyone actually been able to do it once again I haven't been able to log in I've used different email accounts it doesn't seem to work but maybe it's a regional thing maybe it's my emails who knows I'm not going to spend that much time you know uh testing their site for them and doing beta testing but maybe someone out there has done this has been able to get a watch i would love to hear your experiences so far as well what do you think about just this whole subscription model do you think it's going to work a company uh, 11 james attempted to do this and a few others where they would take these watches that were in questionable condition in my opinion and, and lease them out and swap them out it's a business practice and a business model that relies on moving around watches that nobody wants for various factors and also retaining the control of the watches. I'm not really interested in it. I think it's crafty and creative and it goes with the trend of where the world seems to be going with people not owning things. Not for me. Maybe it's for you. I'd love to hear it and see it in the comments below. Thanks, guys. You've been chatting with John P. Ciao.